In a second here, I'm going to talk about uh, the Cassius Society. Again, I read another article I thought was quite interesting that I thought I think I'd, uh, I want to bring toward you. But first of all, I want to address uh, my last article on Psalm 83 War. Uh, I had a couple comments on there that uh, uh, they simply could not believe that I didn't be didn't necessarily believe. And really, I don't, but um, believe in the, the Psalm 83 War. Well, it, the bottom line is this right here. I believe Psalm 83 is a part of Scripture. But I don't believe that Psalm 83 was written for the last days. Uh, yes, do I believe that the nations that surround Israel are at some point in time going to attack uh, Israel? Yeah, I do, but not necessarily because of the Psalm 83 scripture. You know, yes, Psalm 83 is a biblical scripture. I do believe the Bible. I mean, somebody wrote on there on one of my comments that you don't believe, then that must mean you don't believe what the Bible says. No, I believe what the Bible says. I just don't believe how somebody has interpreted Psalm 83. And I'm not alone. I'm not the only person that questions the Psalm 83 uh, as being uh, a part of today's uh, or the last days today. So, I mean, you know, if, that, if that's the okay, case, I mean, it's like, let me put it this way. So, if you don't believe in that something is, uh, you don't interpret something the same way somebody else does, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't believe the Bible. That just means that you don't believe it the way they believe it. I mean, it's like the pre-tribulation rapture. I get all kinds of information from people who tell me, well, this is why the pre-tribulation rapture is incorrect. And they, they, they'll, they'll uh, twist a bunch of scripture around it and say, yeah, this is the reason why I believe that the post-tribulation rapture is correct, or the seventh trump, or pre-wrath, or whatever, and they've got all their scripture lined up. Well, guess what? I'll say the same thing to them. I don't necessarily believe what you're saying is, is biblical. They'll say, well, you don't, you, then they'll, of course, they'll throw in, well, you don't believe the Bible then. Well, no, I just don't believe the way you're interpreting this as it being uh, uh, the correct interpretation. So what I guess what I'm trying to say is, is don't get all bent out of shape if, if you're a big uh, uh, backer of the Psalm 83 war. If it comes to pass, fine. It's not a salvation issue, and I'm not treating it as a, sal a salvation issue. And all. So if you you know if you want to uh, uh, if you if you want to go in that direction, then that's great. It's not going to hurt my feelings one way or the other. And all I do believe the Bible. I believe that Jesus is the only way. Uh, he he is the way to salvation. If you don't have Christ in your life, then you will not go to heaven, and you will be left behind. And the only place for people who do not accept Christ is uh, is a living, breathing hell, and that's eternal. So yes, I believe what the Bible says. So you know, don't try to throw that at me. That just because I don't agree with you, that. I don't believe the Bible. So I just want to throw that out there. I don't want anybody to get upset or whatever the case may be. Uh, if we don't agree on certain things of this nature, then, um, you know, let you know, let it go as far as that's concerned. I mean, it's not something that, uh, it's, like I said, it's not a salvation issue, and uh, we can move on from there. Somebody had pointed out also that I was looking at it from only a logistics point of view. And truthfully speaking, no, that's not the only point of view I have. I don't believe it, it uh, stacks up biblically either. Uh, scripture itself, I don't believe indicates that this is a last days uh, uh, prophecy uh, at all. Uh, and like I said, I'm not the only one. Uh, Thomas Ice, Dr. Thomas Ice of the Pre-Tribulation, uh, Pre-Trib uh, Rapture Center also, uh, he wrote an extensive article on this. He, he considers it pure fi fiction as far as that's concerned. He's a Bible-believing conservative, uh, 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 should I say, theologian that uh, simply doesn't believe it's true either. And there's others. It's that, those not. If you want a list of, of, of prominent conservative Bible-believing names that um, don't believe this theory, then uh, I can give that to you as well, but I'm going to do it off the air. And also, if that's something you want, then then, uh, then uh, just email me, and I'll uh, uh, don't, don't put it on the comments. Email me, and, I'll, and I can give you that list as far as uh, uh, who it is that uh, does not agree with this either. But again, as I said, it's not a big deal. It's not something that uh, I would go out of my way and uh, and argue about, whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, I made my statement, and uh, that was my that was the logistic part of it. I also wrote an article on the on my website, also of the of the scriptural uh, part of why I don't believe uh, this is uh, a legitimate uh, theory. So, uh, you know, if that's something you want to uh, look at, you can uh, go to my website and you can also take a look at that. It's fairly easy to find. Well, this is uh, really what I want to talk about tonight. Was is a, is a second part of the, a cashless society. This is an article. It indicates it's, the title is "A Cashless Society May Be Closer Than Most People Would Ever Dare to Imagine." Uh, it states that most people think a cashless society as something that is way off into the distant future. 
Unfortunately, that is simply not the case. The truth is that Acasta society is much closer than most people would ever dare to imagine. To a large degree, the trans uh, transition to Acasta society is being done voluntarily. Today, only 7% of all transactions in the United States are done with cash, and most of those transactions involve very small amounts of money. Just think about it for a moment. Where do you still use cash these days? If you buy a burger or if you purchase something at a flea market, you may or you will still use cash. But for any mid-size or larger transaction, the vast majority of people out there will use another form of payment. Our financial system is dra dramatically changing and cash is rapidly becoming a thing of the past. We live in a digital world and national governments and big banks are both encouraging the move away from paper currency and coins. But what would a cashless society mean for our future? Are there any dangers in such a system? Those are very important questions, but most of the time, both sides of the issue are not presented in a balanced way in the mainstream media. Instead, most mainstream news articles tend to trash cash and talk about how wonderful digital currency is. So will we see a, to uh, a completely cashless society in the near future? Of course not. At least that's what the writer says. We know that that's uh, probably not going to be the case. Uh, but it would be wildly unpopular for the governments of the world to force such a system upon uh, us all at once. Of course, that's, again, what the writer is indicating. I, I'm, I'm assuming he's not a Christian. He isn't looking at Bible prophecy. So instead, the big banks and the governments of the industrialized world are doing all they can, uh, can to uh, get us to voluntarily transa uh, transition to such a system. Once 98 or 99 percent of all transactions do not involve cash, eliminating the remaining 1 or 2 percent will only seem natural. That is something that uh, you should probably take, take heart in because that's probably going to be the case when the Antichrist comes on the scene and he uh, presents his uh, cashless society uh, and uh, places upon the world. Most of the world's already going to be there already and it's almost going to be a natural occurrence so I don't think that'll be a big issue with uh, the world uh, uh, throughout the global uh, uh, financial system. And a, a cashless society is actually where big banks get rich and uh, uh, through credit card fees, uh, debit card fees or whatever the case may be. So really cash is of no value to them as far as uh, their ability to make money. So they're all for it. So in fact, it says, so obviously the big banks and the big credit card companies are big cheerleaders for a cash of society. Most, of the, most governments around the world are eager to transition to a cash society as well for the following reasons. Cash is expensive to print, inspect, move, store, and guard. Counterfeiting is always going to be a big problem as long as paper currency exists. Most of all, a cashless society would give governments more control. Now this is where the Bible comes in, where the Antichrist will be able to control the whole world. And that's something that uh, uh, even the secular world, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they may not inject the Antichrist in it, but they do realize that government will be able to control the world much more easily. Governments would be able to track virtually all transactions and would also be able to monitor tax compliance such, uh, much more closely. When you understand the factors listed above, it becomes easier to understand why the use of cash is increasingly becoming demonized. Governments around the world are increasingly viewing the use of cash in a negative light. In fact, according to the U.S. government, paying with cash in some circumstances is now considered to be a suspicious activity, such as purchasing drugs or uh, pirating or, or, or trafficking uh, different items that usually require a cash payment. The writer goes on to say, do you see what is happening? Simply using cash is enough to get you branded as a potential criminal these days. And he goes on to say that he believes that many people are going to be scared away from using cash simply because of the stigma that is becoming attached to it. This is a trend that is not just happening in the United States. In fact, many other countries are further down the road toward the cash society uh, than we are. As you know, I just reported last week that uh, Sweden was basically going cashless since there was only like 2 or 3% of the country um, was still using cash to some degree, so um, they've decided they're probably going to 
eliminate uh, try to eliminate their uh, currency and go cashless completely. And in Italy, all very large cash transactions have been banned. Previously, the limit for using cash in a transaction had been reduced to the equivalent of just a few thousand dollars. But back in December, Prime Minister Mario Monti pr proposed a new limit of approximately $1,300 for cash transaction, which means basically that you can't purchase anything above uh, $1,300 with cash. You'll have to, it may be, you may have to have a mixture of cash or whatever the case may be. But anything that's over $1,300, you got to pay uh, with a cashless type uh, um, credit card or whatever the case may be. And that essentially is how all governments are going to go towards this cashless society. They'll just start limiting the ceiling, making it uh, maybe 2000 this year, next year it may be $1,500. And then for too long, we'll be down to cash. Uh, payments can only be $500 uh, maximum, and the rest has to be, or you have to uh, go to a uh, type of cashless type system. Of course, there's always the question of uh, what about uh, identity theft or credit card theft or debit card theft or whatever the case may be. Well, of course, that will be a s situation that will have to be controlled and all, but that's not really uh, something that uh, will matter much to the Antichrist at that point in time. Of course, he will promise that these systems will be secure and that no one will be able to hack into them, but uh, uh, I, I think that'll be the least of his worries at that time. It's going to be something that you're going to be man. It's going to be mandatory, and that you're going to have to do. So that will be the main situation at the time. But right now, uh, as we go forward, virtually everybody pays by some type of uh, cashless uh, type system, credit card, uh, uh, a loan, or whatever the case may be. So we're already well on our way. The article goes on to say, in the future, it is inevitable that national governments and big financial institutions will want to have all of uh, uh, of us transition over to using biometric identity systems in order to combat crime in the financial system. Many of these biometric identity systems are becoming quite advanced. And there are a few examples that they give in this article, but I won't go over that. You can go to the... the uh, Citing uh, that uh, the the website that I gave you earlier on, and you can go ahead and check it out. It says, but it says it's coming in the future. If you do not surrender your biometric identity information, you may be locked out of the entire financial system. Well, that sounds a lot like what uh, Revelation chapter 13 is saying that the Antichrist will basically uh, cut you out from buying, selling, or trading, or whatever the case may be, uh, buying a home, uh, owning a business, feeding your family. Uh, you won't be able to get into the to to the system uh, if you do not supply everything that they want you to supply, or if you, uh, in our case, take take a mark. But there's one thing you need to continue to understand about this mark of the beast. You know, you are pledging your allegiance to the Antichrist. That's what the mark is all about: is the pledge that you're going to worship him and worship his image, and you are now pledging your allegiance to him. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Now the article also goes on to talk about an implantable. Uh, uh, RFID microchip, uh, which we've talked about in the past, and I won't go over that. That is all. That's basically a uh, a possibility. There's also the possibility that they may be using an iris scan or a fingerprint scan, or whatever the case may be. You know, all these things are possible. Uh, there, but there is something that I read in this article that I think really hits home. That I really think that could very well be where this uh, mark system could be heading. And let me let me go ahead and switch to that right now. And here's where it starts up. It says, some companies are even developing RFID technologies that do not require an injection. One company called Somark has developed chipless RFID ink that is uh, applied directly to the skin of an animal or a human. The, these RFID tattoos are uh, applied in about 10 seconds using micro needles and a reusable applicator and they can be ready by uh, they can be read by an RFD or RFID uh, reader from up to four feet away and the, the writer asked the question would you get an RFID tattoo if the government or your bank asked you to do so some people out there are actually quite excited about these new technologies the writer uh, writes and the article uh, goes on to say uh, basically well here are some of the disadvantages of 
of uh, this type of technology talking about an EMP attack it could wipe out our electrical grid and uh, most computers coast to coast or whatever the case may be but he's not looking at the spiritual side of this at all but I wanted to go ahead and I want to, to bring this article to you because it kind of hits home quite heavily with what we believe here in, uh, in the world of Bible prophecy that one day the Antichrist will rise up and when he does uh, at the midway point of the tribulation period he will require that everyone uh, uh, take stock in his system and worship him and uh, uh, pledge your allegiance to him and uh, they will have to take a mark and whatever that mark will be we don't know as of yet but we do know that the Bible says that there will be some type of mark that we will have to take what that will be we don't know but uh, I just thought I wanted to bring this to you to kind of give you an idea of what possibly could be coming down the road. And that's, in fact, it's really almost uh, 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 completed as we speak today. So this is not something that they're going to be throwing on you all at once. This is something that I, I'm assuming, because uh, uh, we, we don't know uh, what, what'll ha what will happen then, only that he will present a mark that most of society will think it's no big deal. And uh, that's speculation on my part, of course. But... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, how it plays out, uh, uh, I guess, when we're in heaven, watching down uh, from above uh, as uh, things play out uh, in the seven-year tribulation period. And the last thing he states is he takes a quote. It says from the CBS News article, it says that most agree a caste society is not only inevitable, for most of us, it's already here. And I agree with him 100%. Uh, I just believe that the Antichrist, when he comes on the scene, will take it to a new level in which he will tack on that you'll have to pledge your allegiance to him and you'll have to actually worship him you know but you know what there's something that's even worse than uh, you know we, we we talk about going through the tribulation period and how terrible it is but there's something worse than the tribulation period that man will one day be faced with and that is uh, after the judgment they're either going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell and if you don't know the lord as savior if you, you are on a road to hell uh, and that is eternal the bible says that Hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, and where the fire is never quenched. In fact, it says the worm, where the worm dieth not, means that you will burn forever and ever. And you know that's something that somewhere you don't have to go to. In fact, if you die today without Christ, you're dying with your sins paid for, because Christ has already paid for your sins on the cross. All you have to do is accept it, believe, turn your life over to Him, repent of your sins, and He will come into your life and save your soul. Uh, you know that's worse that's a worse thing than the tribulation period I realize that that's gonna be seven years of pure hell on earth but the truth of the matter is that you still have eternity to look to you know this weekend is the Easter season and uh, you know what a wonderful time it would be if you decided to give your heart to the Lord this week um, I trust that uh, you'll take this uh, seriously and that you will uh, make a decision for Christ this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.